3種類に分かれてるピザですかこれ全部を1人でこうすると便利だから便利シーフードピザとグラタンピザ焼肉ピザにサラミとマッシュルームのピザ種類ごとに分けて4食分にして食べると朝昼晩とピザ続いても違う味だから飽きないんです確かにでもちょっと寂しすぎる気が。Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Anime with Alvin. Today I'll be making the four flavored pizza from Gourmet Girl Graffiti. One of the flavors is Yakiniku, a grilled beef dish in a sweet soy sauce that seems rather interesting to place on pizza. Needless to say, we got some really nicely marbled short ribs from the store, so I'm pretty excited. But before we can get to the really fun parts, I do have to make pizza dough. In a food processor, I'm combining 500 grams of bread flour, 25 grams of sugar, 10 grams of kosher salt, 2 teaspoons of instant dry yeast, and I'm streaming in 300 grams of cold water with 15 milliliters of olive oil. Once the dough looks pretty solid, I'm going to take it out, flour my surface, and knead and roll this dough for about 5 to 10 minutes until it comes together in a smooth ball. Uh, shout out to Rachel for stepping in. I got tired after a little bit, so it's always nice when you have some extra help. Once the dough looks pretty smooth, I'm greasing up a little bathtub for our dough to just hang out in and grow up a little, just like we all do. The pizza from the show seems to have a white sauce base for all four of its flavors. So, in a large saucepan, combining three quarters a cup of butter, three quarters a cup of flour, and cooking that until this roux becomes a nice blonde color. I'm then streaming and whisking in three cups of milk. It seems like no matter how many times I make a white sauce or a bechamel, I could never get the milk and the flour to completely come together without any lumps. But the idea here is to whisk pretty constantly so that the liquid and the flour don't have too much time to clump up. But the great thing is, worst comes to worst, just use an immersion blender and all your lumps are problem free. And to season this sauce, just some kosher salt and black pepper to taste. And our white pizza sauce is done. To make our yakiniku sauce, I'm adding 3 tablespoons of soy sauce, 2 tablespoons of sake, 2 tablespoons of mirin, 1 teaspoon of sugar, and 1 teaspoon of lemon juice in a pan to reduce. Then I'm going to microplane in 1 garlic clove and about a teaspoon of ginger. Once the rawness has been cooked out and our sauce is looking nice and sticky, I'm going to let that cool down while we cook our beef, arranging our beautiful short rib slices in a single layer and cooking until brown on each side. A lot of the beef fat comes out while it cooks, so I'm just gonna drain a little bit of that before we add in back our yakiniku sauce and let everybody just hang out until they're all friends. And that beef looks pretty good to me, so off to the side and we're gonna move on. Flavor number two out of four is a gratin pizza with sliced ham and pasta noodles. So I'm just gonna quickly cook some pasta the normal way, salt the water, throw in some penne, while I slice up a couple slices of ham. Why, why are you over boiling like that? You got, no, don't do that. Oh, you're not even done yet. What the, go back in there. The pasta seems to be fighting back today. Maybe because it knows it's going to end up on a pizza. Anywho, we're gonna do the next flavor now. Salami and mushroom. Pretty simple on this one, just frying up some mushrooms in neutral oil until it's all ready to go. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it for this one. We spent most of the money on the beef. And for our final flavor, a seafood-like pizza. It seems like those green rings found on the pizza in the show for this flavor seems to be sliced peppers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut up a couple of shishito peppers, making sure to take out as many of the seeds as I can. As for the seafood, I'm slicing up a couple of rings of squid. And that's pretty much it for the prep for our toppings. So now it's time to actually make this pizza. Our dough has grown quite large. This amount of dough is actually enough for three pizzas. So I'm gonna evenly divide this and wait until we have three nice, evenly shaped round pizza balls. There's a lot of people in the studio today and I thought it'd be fun to just make some more pizzas. Cause when you make pizza, you can't just make one. Cause the first one is not the good one. The ones after that, those are the good ones. One of my favorite parts about this pizza in the anime is that it is a stuffed crust pizza, which means we get to play with 10 pieces of string cheese, cutting them in half and have them eagerly wait to the side to be wrapped in their dough blankets. I'm by no means a professional pizza maker. This is actually the very first time I have attempted to make actual pizza from scratch. So I'm glad that I have Rachel here with me to teach me the basics of how to stretch and shape the dough, trying to keep it in as circular as a shape while it expands. It's a lot trickier than it looks. You can't just have it magically become a large big circle. I tried that, didn't really work so well. As you can see, my first attempt turned out not so great. The goal is to make a circle, not a rectangle. Like I said, the first one is the bad one. But with Rachel's guidance, a lot of perseverance, and a lot of stretching and pulling, I have a somewhat workable pizza dough. If we had let the dough rest for a second time before shaping it, it would have been even easier to shape. 
It's really important to make sure that you give it a generous dusting of semolina flour before it goes on any pizza peel. Otherwise, as it sits there while you assemble the toppings, it'll stick pretty hard. And now for the really fun part, placing and nestling each string cheese chunk into the crust of the dough around in a circle and tucking and rolling them in their blankets. Nice. Now that our pizza walls have been heavily fortified with cheese, it is time to build our four flavor quadrants. First goes down a small ladle of our white sauce, spread evenly across the base, but not too much or else the pizza will become soggy. According to the anime episode, the gratin quadrant contains corn, so I'm just spooning a little bit of canned corn onto the white sauce there. This is followed by a light rain shower of low moisture mozzarella cheese all over the whole entire thing. Let me just make some guidelines in the pizza so I don't overflow. First is the gratin quadrant, laying down slices of our ham and the cooked penne pasta evenly, but not too even. Adjacent to that is the salami and mushroom quadrant. Our cooked mushrooms go down along with sliced and quartered salami. Pretty simple. Next up is the yakiniku flavor quadrant, laying down our beautiful pieces of grilled and glazed beef. In the show, this not only contains sliced squid rings, but also shrimp, and then topped off with thinly sliced shishito peppers. As I look at this, I can't help but wonder about how evenly this is all going to cook. But there's only one way to find out, so we gotta go outside. So, I'm cooking this crazy four flavor pizza outside in our uni pizza oven. If you don't have one of those, you can use your home oven. I would provide more detailed instructions on how we did this, but it was more of like a, I think that looks pretty good, let's rotate it so that every part can look that good. I didn't want the toppings to burn, but I also wanted to make sure that the sauce, cheese, and dough had enough time to cook through and become good friends. But I have to admit, for our first try on this crazy pizza, not looking too bad. The final topic for our pizza are thinly dried chili strands used to garnish the yakiniku quadrant of our pizza. And I present to you our very first attempt of this crazy four flavor pizza from Gourmet Girl Graffiti, which apparently is the kind of pizza you can get delivered right to your door. Man, I wish I lived there. And as the appropriate tool for the job, I found a mezzaluna, or just a really big tool used to cut pizza in nice big slices. There should be some sort of peace prize to the person that invented a stuffed crust pizza, because there's nothing quite like it. But how does this all taste? As you might have guessed, a salami and mushroom slice of pizza is not going to taste bad. In fact, it tastes pretty good. I personally would have preferred pepperoni, but the salami adds a nice acidic touch. And now for the slice I've been personally anticipating the most, the yakiniku pizza. Whoa, this is really good. Oh wait, is that, is that a cheese pull I see? The sweet, smoky, and slightly acidic beef go really well with the cheese. Oh hey, it's Andrew. Looks like he went for a seafood slice. Oh, wow, that's, mm-hmm. Why, why, why did you take your hat off? Now that's a lot of cheese. You can't tell, but everybody else in the studio is laughing pretty hard right about now. Speaking of the people in the studio, I wanted to quickly highlight the gratin and the seafood slices before letting everybody dig in. That's the best part about pizza, especially one with four flavors. You can all have a different slice and talk about which one is your favorite. But you remember when I said we had enough dough for three pizzas? Well, that first pizza got eaten pretty quickly, so I decided to make one really, really big pizza, not holding back and just loading this entire thing up. So, that is exactly what I did. Honestly, for the first time making pizza, I had a bunch of fun, and everybody in the studio had a lot of fun as well because they got to eat it. But I present to you version number two of the four flavor pizza from Gourmet Girl Graffiti, the mega deluxe version. Let's just say a very good time was had that day. The really cool part about this kind of pizza is that you can actually cut slices that have two adjacent flavors on the same slice. So we kind of did that and it was pretty good. And everybody left the studio very happy.